Hello and welcome to the Reykjavik Grapevines newscast. My name is Valur Grætisson. I'm the editor-in-chief at the Reykjavik Grapevine, uh, an Icelandic cultural magazine based in Reykjavik, uh, capital of Iceland. And with me, the, this eager dog there is Polly. Uh, she's my chief of morale officers and she is absolutely wonderful, as you can see, as she's also relentless when it comes to throwing, whether it's balls or, or, uh, or a frisbee. But before we start, a long time seen, though, by the way. A lot of things have happened. I'll tell you all about this. We, of course, printed a new magazine. But I want to show you this. This is quite something. This is, of course, Omnom's Advanced Sundays. Uh, it's a, like a chocolate series that they have for the, for the holidays, for, for Christmas. Uh, so you can actually, if you can find this in a store, uh, and if you're going to have a very nice Christmas... And this is a pretty original way to do this. So on, on, on every Sunday, you can actually open this up and you will have these packages here, as you can see. So it's dark chocolate raspberry almonds on the first Sunday. Uh, then mocha chocolate uh, rum raisin. Sounds very good. Uh, sea salted toffee almonds and milk chocolate hazelnuts on the fourth uh, Sunday. Uh, fourth in Advent, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it's really nice. Uh, you can find this, of course, uh, in our homepage at, uh, at reykjagreipan.is. It's in our shop. Uh, or you can find this in a link, of course, down there. But we're going to tell you news. That's why we're here. Uh, let's just go for it, right? So, uh, we came here, this is Landakot's tune. Uh, I came here because I want to play Frolf. Uh, it's a long time we played that silly game, but I absolutely love it. Uh, I have no idea where we start. Was it perhaps there? Yes. I think I know where it is. So, uh, first thing in news though. Uh, the, the last week was a bit rough when it came to news. Uh, the biggest news, uh, and became a huge news, uh, was basically that uh, the National Commun Commissioner in Iceland uh, oversaw uh, like deportation of uh, around 15 asylum seekers um, from Iraq and Iran and uh, possibly from Afghanistan. Can't remember correctly here, but it uh, might be. Uh, the thing is, of course, that... Uh, they were deported because of the Dublin regulation. And for those that don't know the Dublin regulation, it basically means that if you come as an asylum seeker into Europe, uh, you have to get uh, like an application opened uh, when it comes to everything. Uh, and the thing is that uh, uh, like when you go to a second country without actually finishing that application, uh, that country, in this case Iceland, can send you back to, in this case Greece, to actually go through this application and finish it. Uh, this has been misused. Uh, many nations have been accused of this. Yeah, wait, Polly, we're going to do uh, the famous, uh, famous frolf here. We start here. Okay. Okay, this is a hard one. How do we do this? So we try to go through the trees. Ah! Well... Okay, I remember where it landed. It's, of course, it's... it's it doesn't work very well to actually do this in poly, so you always <laughs> mess this up you, where, where you are. But this is not all bad, right? Okay, one throw. And... Okay, two throws. Yep, yeah, and just... Three throws. <laughs> yeah, tuck. Tuck. Yeah, you're way too smart for those tricks. 
So here's what happened. Uh, the, the police uh, did this in a, in a way that uh, offended the Icelandic nation and the Icelandic nation was not happy. And when I talk about Icelandic nation, I'm talking about, talking about social media, news and such. Uh, that can be all kinds. Uh, uh, where's the next? Here's the next one. Uh, so the thing is that uh, when they were actually doing this, and this is what has been criticized. First of all, there was a disabled man there. Uh, this disabled man, he was not transferred in a, in, a, in a special car for people that are disabled. So there was a footage of this man being kind of crept into a, a police van, surrounded by police officers. And we have a picture of this. And this is the picture uh, that was in all of the, all of the media. Uh, and basically sparked a national outcry because of this. Because it's also about uh, uh, the Icelanders, they want that uh, the people, like when they go through this very hard uh, deportation and process, that you have to be aware of their human rights and their, like, just human respect. This is very uh, important for Icelanders. Uh, so this is one of the points. Another point also is that when the... Uh, when the uh, uh, national broadcast, the roof, uh, there were reporters in, in the area and they wanted to get footage of all of this because they had to, uh, the police drove these people to Keplavik, which is where our international airport is, uh, and they wanted to, uh, and they wanted to uh, get footage of the, of, of the plane while they were putting them in the plane. What do you want us? Let's do it. Maybe this is three. No. Is it? Yeah, there it is. Thank you, Art. So, <laughs> it's a bit uh, longer than I expected. So, I'm just gonna finish it here. Here's the thing. Uh, what they did actually is that, first of all, they took the cell phones of the people. They shut down the body cams because they said it was to uh, protect their respect of the people that they were actually deporting. And when they were at the, at the, at the airport, they actually, uh, an Isavia, it's a company, service company for the airport, uh, it's state owned, by the way. Uh, they actually turned on floodlights so the camera wouldn't get any footage from this. Now, this was criticized heavily because what were they trying? Well, they were trying, trying to hide everything, weren't they? Also, in a very uh, interesting interview at the roof, uh, the reporter at the roof, or the uh, newscaster, uh, he actually said, asked them, like, why do you take their phones from them? Uh, because, I mean, aren't they allowed to call their lawyers? They said, yes, they are definitely allowed to call their lawyers. But, and then he asked, but how can they do this without their phones? Like, and then he, the, the spokesperson from the National Com Commissioner said, well, we do it for their own safety. And then he asked the only logical question here, like, do you, do you think that cell phones are dangerous? And then, of course, the spokesperson did not have many answers. Uh, this has been such an outcry within the society that there have been two protests uh, downtown Reykjavik. Uh, we have well, one throw. Okay, Polly, don't be so eager about it. <gasps> oh! Almost. Now, what happened, though, is that uh, people... Uh, like uh, one of these people, Hussein, he actually has a depending uh, court case going on, but he was sent out before they could close that uh, court case. Which is interesting because uh, the judge in the case, he was, let's say, let's assume that he was quite pissed and furious about this. But what he did, he actually asked the lawyers, uh, as well as the, the basically to, to go and talk to, well done, he asked the lawyers to check out if there was any way to actually get Hussein back to Iceland to stand trial in this case. And the trial is basically like, uh, there, there has been, he has gotten no from the government uh, about asylum here in Iceland. And you can appeal this to the court in Iceland. But it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't affect if it can deport you or not. So the thing is that uh, they did it like this. 
Uh, and uh, we will know later today if actually uh, Hussein will be brought back to Iceland because the judge want him back. And this is bad. It, well, this is flat out embarrassing uh, for the National Commissioner as well as the politics. And the politi politicians that are going like are like uh, ruling this uh, uh, ruling this case, how we would put that, uh, they are... Uh, yeah, they are like uh, in much, very much of a defense, but they say it's legal, it's, it's like it is what it is, and so on. So, let's see how it goes, but if it will be brought back to Iceland, this, was def this will definitely be a humiliating act, uh, which will, where the judges in Iceland will basically tell, like, uh, you can't do this before we, we finish our court cases. So, this is number four. No. Now, more news about the National Commissioners. This is, I have to say, a bit hilarious. And this is not very good for, for them, at least. Now, where, where did it end? Was it here, Polly? Here. So, uh, the, the interrogation over the father of the, the Commissioner in Iceland, the National Commissioner, her name is Sigrid Björk, uh, Gunnjörn's daughter, no. Ah, almost. The interrogation actually leaked to the, to the media. And there were a few things which were very questionable when it came to these interrogations. First of all, uh, they, like, there is actually a loss. <laughs> Three, that was good, right? How many should it be? I don't know, I don't even know the rules, to be honest. So the thing is that uh, he was interrogated in ho at home, but this is actually illegal in Iceland, except you have a very specific reason not to do this. For example, if the, if the person you're interrogating is very sick and he's in, at hospital and so on, or in another country or whatever, uh, there can be exceptions of this, but doing this uh, with a, with a, in a criminal case, connected to the first terrorist plot ever to be foiled in Iceland, uh, it feels weird, to be honest. Uh, and, and the thing is that uh, the police officers, they were like uh, asking this man because he's accused of selling these, uh, these terrorists, alleged terrorists, uh, like weapons, automatic weapons. And of course in Iceland, the, the, all of this is, is illegal. Uh, we have like semi-automatic shotguns and so on. However, that would uh, keep in mind. I know know nothing about guns. This is a long one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. So they came to his home uh, and they asked him, "Did you sell these boys these uh, illegal fire weapons?" And he said, "No, absolutely not." And they asked. Did you sell them these 3D printed guns or uh, stuff into these 3D printed guns? Again, he said no. But not only that, he was uh, he was very offended by this, very offended by that the police were there asking him, and he was always reminding them who his daughter was, the national commissioner, uh, and the police was obviously going. Let's just say this was like uh, the most polite conversation you can ever have with a man that is being interrogated in, uh, as, a, as a possible suspect in a terrorist plot uh, anywhere, I have to say. Uh, uh, ooh, almost. Uh, we don't know where this will end, but there are lawyers in Iceland, uh, well-known lawyers, uh, they have been saying that the credibility of the National Commissioner is down to nothing. They say she must resign. This is absolutely absurd, to be honest. So it's interesting. Over here. Like this. Ah, not again. So the thing is, uh, the justice minister in Iceland, he is protecting uh, the national commissioner, saying she did nothing wrong and so on. So she still, she has her... Uh, 
it's still there, uh, but this is becoming weirder and weirder, and in my opinion, this might actually go badly for the national commissioners. But we have to see. Now, where's the next one? There somewhere. And then down to Seuros. You know the band, uh, the elves. Uh, the, the, the elf is musician that made uh, wonderful albums throughout the decades. Uh, but uh, in 2010 to 2014, it turns out that they have not been very honest about their taxes. So uh, the police in Iceland uh, and the prosecutor, they went heavily after them because of alleged uh, tax fraud, but they were actually acquitted, all of them, uh, last year uh, in the, the judicial court in Iceland. Now, uh, the, the, the prosecutor has been thinking about what the next step should be, and there, it was announced today that they will not, uh, like, uh, repeal, appeal, sorry, uh, three of these cases, but they will try to go after Jónsi. And he is, of course, the most famous one of the, of the bands. He is the singer of the band, a wonderful musician. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, this is getting harder and harder. What do you see, Polly? Do you think we can get this in four? If you, if you take it to the end for me. Okay, or... Hey! Oh yeah, that was awful, wasn't it? The thing is that Jonsi, he is accused of actually uh, avoiding paying taxes of 700 million Icelandic krona. This is around uh, three, four, uh, four million dollars, I think. Uh, and of this money, he didn't pay around 140 million Icelandic krona uh, in two taxes. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, they've been acquitted, and, and the Icelandic government is quite notorious for being aggressive in these tax cases. Yeah, hey, not my best, not my A game, to be honest. Wait, what, two? So they're going, going after Sigurós, uh, and it will be interesting to see. We have seen that they are now playing again, like they, are, they were playing in Finland the other time, uh, the other day. They, they are actually in our newest, newest print, print version of Reykjavik Greipa in an interview, although not, not Jóns himself. Uh, and they don't really talk about this because it's, it's a little bit old news in Iceland, uh, but it was uh, just broke out this morning that they are actually going to go after Jóns, uh, although they're going to let the, the others slide. Well, slight, they were just acquitted by this. Uh, <clears throat> yes, and the, the last news, the, I wouldn't say worst news, but this is not good news for uh, you. Uh, the, if you want to travel to Iceland as a tourist, for example. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, you know, you remember Kirkjufell uh, in Grundafjörður, uh, a wonderful, weird mountain we used to appear in the Game of Thrones, for example. Uh, this is north of the wall. Uh, this is where the winter comes from and so on. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, there have been three deaths uh, connected to this mountain in just a few years. Oof, Polly. Am I? We're having a bad day here, aren't we? Uh. Let's just be honest about it. Oh, okay, one, two, three, four. God damn it, what is it? Bokey, something. So, uh, people didn't really know what to do with this, uh, with this uh, because uh, this is a very like a good spot for tourism for the area, and it is a very important spot also because a lot of things come to tourism, and it lifts up everything when it comes to the to the to the countryside, like when it comes to service, uh, selling stuff, and what what not. And the thing is that uh, the landowners they decided that from now on it will be banned to go up the mountain to hike it up, uh, and they said that. Uh, for now, it will be like this because these are way too many deaths. Uh, and keep in mind, these are quite. This is very high for Iceland. Uh, so the, what they did is that they they will close it because they say nobody should be there over the the full winter. Uh, and they will open it again 
uh, in middle of June after uh, the nesting season. Okay. Uh, and that will be in the middle of June. Uh, it's usually just around the 15th of June. And this means that you can actually go, like if you're here in the, in the high summer, you might be able to go up there. But once again, and just a good reminder, the mountain is still a little treacherous, uh, and all mountains in Iceland can be very lethal if, you, if you're not uh, careful enough. <laughs> okay. Let's go for it. Hole in one, what do you say? What? This is harder than you think, man. Uh, and in the end, airwaves. Iceland airwaves was over, over the weekend and it was bloody marvelous. Uh, it was really nice to meet a lot of people there. A lot of people that watch the, the channel. Uh, if you're watching now, it was, it was wonderful to meet all of you. Many people from Germany and, and so on. Uh, and. And this was just literally a rock and roll festival with a lot of nice elements. It was very, like 8,000 people came to the festival. Uh, half of them were uh, travelers, tourists, and, uh, and, and just music lovers from, not from Iceland. And uh, it was just uh, ridiculously nice. Uh, my favorite bands were actually, many of them were from the Faroe Islands, to be honest. Uh, I like uh, Cowboy Kex. Uh, like uh, you should actually look them up on uh, on uh, YouTube. They, they are a bit weirder actually on YouTube than they are on the stage. They are more straightforward rock and roll, but they are hilariously fun. Uh, then of course Janus Rasmussen. He was in Kiosmos with Oliver Arnolds. Where, where where are we going? Now, uh, where is the basket? Ah, yo. Okay. How do we do this? Okay, Polly. You have to work with me here. Don't pick it up immediately. <laughs> Anyways, I loved, uh, I loved the festival. Uh, you should definitely be here next year. Uh, it was all of it was a, a, a complete success. Uh, the daughters of Reykjavik, they were also amazing. Uh, and I was just and Gukusar, if you actually, it, all of this was brilliant. Uh, but we don't have much more in news today. But we have a lot in news. So if you go to grapevine.is, you can find even more about it. And I'm gonna try to see where I can take this. Until next time, goodbye. Ah, yeah, Polly. Okay, it is done. Oh. Ah.